All right, people, how we doing? We're gonna speak on this Elite LTT with the red dot set up. Uh, this, this video is brought to you by Pops Quest, <laughs> ammo manufacturing company. Yes, sir. Is your missing a finger? <laughs> and what we're gonna do is speak on this thing, a little bit of a shooting review here. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna blast on it a little bit. I'm gonna speak on the characteristics of the gun and then the characteristics of adding the red dot to the gun. Since I've already previously owned this pistol for a year and a half or so, got several thousand rounds down uh, through the gun. Now putting the red dot on it, um, I feel like it's just taking this pistol from a, from a fun, you know, sweet gun to have to being a, a legitimate viable ripper, like a, a unit. So uh, the, the red dot on top of it just makes it, it puts it in a whole nother ballpark for me. And it's, uh, it shows because one, I won my first match with it. Uh, after zeroing it and put a hundred, hundred rounds through it, I uh, went and shot the match the next day, one carry optics, there was 37 carry optic shooters, so it wasn't like there was nobody there or something. I uh, got like seventh overall, I believe, out of 130. So uh, very, very strong showing for not having any real time under my belt. I zeroed the optic, shot a couple of, about a hundred rounds worth of uh, build drills and some reload drills, just kind of moving around and shooting a little bit to see what it felt like and was able to go right to maybe maybe not quite on pace with myself with my Glock 17 carry optics gun, but like right there, you know, able to still win. And that's that that speaks volumes to how good the gun is. And I just want to say, first of all, if you want a real comprehensive review of this thing, like every nut and bolt and everything else, uh, Humble Marksman did a really good job on his review, kind of going down through the whole gamut of it. Uh, if you want a real comprehensive review on the pieces and parts and stuff, uh, he's probably got you covered a little more than I do. Uh, I'm just going to kind of run through this and whatever pops out of my head pops out. But um, I want to say, you know, get, give a big uh, shout out to Ernest Langdon because most people just said, there's no way. You're not going to put a red dot on a 92. Most people said, no, nope, no way. You could dovetail one or just stick one on top of it some goofy way, but there's no way to mill in and get a red dot sitting flat, uh, low, low height overboard. It's just not going to happen. And Ernest Langdon said, hey, we'll figure it out. And they did. And they didn't do it half ass. They did a very good job of it. They got a 0.75 inch height overboard, which is on par or lower height overboard than, than anything else out there. Um, they, they milled it in and put this plate system with a rear sight already uh, built into it. The, the way the decockers are there, the, the, the little bit of overhang isn't aesthetically horrible. It, it looks fairly good. And with the decockers and everything, when you look at the gun from the, from the, uh, from the shooter's perspective, it, you can't tell that there's a gap there at all. Like, they just did a phenomenal job. <clears throat> making do with what they had because the 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 slide without uh engineering a slide from a freaking piece of bar stock and and completely re-engineering and building whole slides from scrap uh barring that they they did a a great job of of making it work so got to give the uh the nod to Ernest on that one so i already know that this pistol is freaking awesome i shot it a good bit uh it probably has around 5,000 rounds through it, maybe. Uh, four to 5,000 with iron sights. So it has a 12 pound hammer spring and a trigger job in a bag that I installed. And the trigger is just great, especially with a couple thousand rounds through it. Everything is settled in. The gun really, uh, it's smooth as silk. Trigger is amazing. About a six and a half pound double action, nice and linear. Uh, you can you can stage it if you want and then break it and that's especially helpful if let's say I'm starting a, a stage and I have to step into the box or into position you can stage it about halfway and then kind of get to where you can see your first target and just break so it, it does lend itself to uh, 
a few different styles of double action pull. Obviously you can roll right through it like butter and obviously you could creep through it really, really slowly if you wanted. Um, six and a half pounds or so. Single action is extremely light and crisp, uh, probably three pounds or so, but you, I mean, honestly, you, when you're shooting fast, you don't even really feel it. You just kind of tap, 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 breaking it. And then it, it has some take up, which I really enjoy. Um, the take up allows you to stage your trigger. So when you're coming off of a, a paper target onto a fine shot or a, uh, a partial or a piece of steel, you can prep ray to that perfect wall and then break. So with that light single action trigger, the transitions on steel are just super nice. I can, I can come over and just kind of let that thing just kind of pop off the steel. It's so easy uh, compared to a Glock trigger. Uh, Single-handed shooting, we can. It, it really lends itself to doing well there. And the double action is so good and smooth that it's, it's not a, a hindrance whatsoever. It's just easy. Um, the rest of the pistol, one other thing that I really love, I'm not a fan of competing with a gun that I can't carry, okay? Uh, and if, I, if I'm gonna compete with a gun that I can't carry, I'm just gonna run open division in USPSA. I like to be able to carry the gun that I compete with. I like to have a competition race gun that is still a carry gun, and these 92s are surprisingly good for carry. The 92, the ass end of it, is not quite what you would call a full size, and it's not quite a compact. It's, it's, it is a shorter butt than a lot of guns. Now, if you have super big old sausage fingers, that might be a little bit of a pain for you, but uh, most people, I have decent sized hands, most people are going to, uh, to get away with, with what they got here. And uh, it just makes the gun very concealable. I have a Dark Star gear holster. Had to modify it a little bit with the red dot setup, but this thing carries like a dream. And again, like I said, I don't like to compete with a gun that I can't carry. So let's talk about the red dot and how it works with the slide. And I'll throw in here, we'll kind of chop this up and I'll throw in some recoil control stuff and, uh, and show you guys kind of how the gun tracks and how it likes to be run. So, so it is a little bit higher. So where your hand is in the beaver tail compared to where the optic is, it is a little bit higher of a bore axis in that way, okay? But the way this slide is designed with no weight up here and the linear tracking of the 92 and the dot and the, the added material, added maybe a couple grams of weight here or whatever it ends up being, it's right over the grip and it's it's kind of it's it's keeping everything right in there to where there's not a lot of rock and where it really helps is the gun doesn't dip when it comes back into battery Okay, so, so all that material and everything being right over top the kind of axis of your hand, I think helps it rock in a, in a little bit of a, a, a lesser motion. It doesn't want to break your wrist as much. That light slide coming back doesn't want to break the wrist. And it also, like I said, it doesn't want to snap the gun forward. The, the couple ounces of weight over, over striker fired polymer pistols uh, is going to help mitigate a little bit of recoil, maybe soften it just a little bit, uh, but, but it's not too heavy to carry. One other thing that, that helps with the recoil control is the fat kind of wide back strap. 
So a lot of people want a real skinny little gun in their hand, but then they say how snappy it feels, right? You don't want a skinny little back strap. You really don't, okay? Having a little bit of girth right here, getting really dug into the palm of your hand, that, that, all that surface area right there really absorbs the recoil. The more surface area you have right there in the back of the gun, obviously you don't want it to be super wide and fat where you can't, uh, can't reach the trigger or something, but you want some surface area back there and that width helps with recoil control. It sits the recoil into your hands and into your wrists very well and it doesn't have any kind of snap to it whatsoever. I really do think pound for pound, it, it's, it's solid on recoil. Stand by. Okay, so one area with this pistol that I was worried I might not like. Okay, something that I thought might be a deal breaker. The reason I enjoy Glock so much is because of the low bore axis and the low sight to hand ratio. So that, that bore axis and you being able to get right up under there, you know, my, the back of my hand is right here, smashed up into a Glock and the, uh, the, the red dot is basically right over top my hand. And I always really enjoyed that, I still do. And I thought that might be a deal breaker with this pistol. If, if the, the relationship between where my hand is, beaver tail wise, and the red dot, if that's too tall, I might not like it. And then I thought it would give it some flippiness. Now we know, I already know that the recoil, it, the, you cannot tell that whatsoever. It has uh, probably a softer recoil than a Glock, even though the, the bore axis uh, kind of argument is out there. Um, I do, I do believe it makes a little bit of a difference, but <clears throat> with the 92 and the, the, the slick action and the, the linear uh, recoil path, the wide back strap, all those things, so, so that took out the recoil part of it completely. Then I started to realize something that was pretty neat. And this is something that, that uh, I think might, might really resonate with a lot of people. So I started realizing that with the red dot being up away from my hands, I was able to actually transition from target to target and see a little bit better. So what I mean by that is, on my Glocks, you know, I have big meaty hands, right? So I'm like this and my red dot is basically right over top my hands with a Glock. Whereas this thing, my hands are down a little bit lower and the red dot is just, it's just up that little bit right it's just up away from my hand so my hands are this big ball right here and then usually it's this big ball of hands and then the dot right above them whereas this is the the ball of hands is down just a little bit lower and the dot is up free of that big ball of meat right there so what that did for me was it allowed me to see on both sides of the red dot a little bit better so as i'm tracking target to target to target I was pushing the gun and stopping more precisely and I was just able to see more around the red dot. So in other words, there was just less obstruction in my vision around this dot. So I'm able to see on this side and this side very, very clearly when I'm swinging onto targets. That started to really present itself to me in the first match that I shot and I started to feel really confident with it really quickly. And it kind of just hit me like, why does this feel like I'm able to transition it better? And then I thought, it's got to be because there's more vision around the sides of that dot. So I've been playing with that more in dry practice. And sure enough, that is the case. That's, what I, that's the sensation that I was feeling. And it's absolutely a thing. So if you're thinking you might not like that, that dot sitting higher up over your hands, I would give it a try. I would give it a try because it really did feel pretty cool and now it's uh, it's just really feeling good to me. And especially when targets are kind of close together uh, and packed in a little bit or if there's a couple right in a row, I can see all of them instead of me kind of obstructing half of my second target with my hands or something. So it, uh, 
it allowed almost a little bit like an open gun feel right so open guns are so cool because the dot just sits there and the gun moves underneath of it and the dot is kind of up away from everything so when you present it around it's it's just basically like a red dot floating in the air and and everything else is down below it and you have all this vision right and then obviously the the non-reciprocating dot just kind of sits there and it's really steady that's the sensation i was getting with this gun and it was uh it was really speaking to me right off the bat. So I think that's one big, big thing. Uh, obviously, we know the gun shoots well. We know these things are accurate as hell. We know that uh, the Langdon package is great. The trigger, the mag release drops mags super quick. The only downside I can really see basically the only thing that I can see that's a little bit of a detriment in my performance right now is reloads. So with Glock and especially Gen 5 Glocks with that little added mag well, um, I can just sling reloads like a crazy person and I'm really confident in them. But with this thing, it is a tighter opening. It's not quite the same. You do have to be a little bit more precise. The, the mags drop better out of this gun but going back in, you just have to chill out a little bit. For, from what I can see in my practice, it's added about a tenth. So it's not, uh, it's not a thing that's gonna slow me down in my quest to, to get a GM card and carry optics. It's, it's nothing like that. It's not gonna hinder me that much. It's just a, a little bit more practice and evolving my technique just a little bit for this particular pistol. The front cocking serrations, I mean, I like the way this gun handles as far as uh, unloaded starts, stuff like that. It, it racks so easily that slam, went, I mean, it, and then racking it from the front, I'll show you one other little weird thing I found with it. <clears throat> when you're racking from the front, look at where my, the pad of my hand kind of hits the SRO. So let's say you kind of, didn't get a good grasp I'm up against the SRO so as I come over and go to load and rack my hands no matter what even if I miss my serrations a little bit my hands gonna hit the SRO boom and I can get a good solid really aggressive fast rack on the gun uh, obviously you can still do this or even smash it off the optic I think the plate system is going to be perfectly fine for hard use like that. We'll wait till uh, Sage Dynamics or somebody does his, uh, his beating it off a fence post or whatever to, to figure out how solid that shit is. I'm not doing that, but uh, I just think that it's a, it's a winner all the way around. Uh, as far as holster compatibility goes, I got a CompTAC holster just to stick on my boss hanger and then I, I can just re reconfigure my pouches. Uh, that's no big deal. I'm going to get some Springer Precision base pads. Um, these are some Wilson Combat Metgar 20 rounders with a big base pad, which is kind of cool. Uh, they, they, they've been really good. So I'll probably pick up a couple more of these and a couple of the Springer Precision ones that are plus fives. And then <clears throat> as far as holster compatibility, uh, I got a CompTAC here. I had to do a little shaving to it, a little loving on it just to make it, make it right. But it's, it's slowly gotten better and better to the point where I'm kind of uh, cranking in the retention here and there as I go. And it's loosening up and fitting a little better all the time. Pretty cheap, pretty cheap option. And then uh, my Dark Star Gear concealment holster my appendix holster which is a fabulous holster 
uh, I did have to do some heavy modification because it was not a red dot cut holster whatsoever because <laughs> hey <laughs> there wasn't red dots on 92s until a couple of weeks ago really or, or, or a few months so um, I did have to change it quite a bit but uh, if you got a Dremel a pair of cutters and and a lighter <laughs> I mean you can you can rework a Kydex holster if you're if you're at all slick at uh, at mechanical stuff so not not a big deal there and more and more people are going to be coming out with uh, red dot cut options and things Harry's holsters is coming out with a competition holster for it I'm sure he'll be digging into some different things uh, and dark star gear is probably going to be coming out with an RDO version so solid shit all the way around man i love this thing i'm really enjoying it i, I can't wait to to put in more and more time with it to get really tuned up with it and uh, we'll see what next year looks like in carry optics hopefully we can continue to uh, progress and instead of winning local matches uh we're gonna you know be trying to to put her on the top of the board in area eight matches and things like that uh next year so Got a lot of work to do, but we'll get that done. And I think this is gonna be a winner for the foreseeable future. The only thing I've had happen is my front sight got a little loose. So I just pecked it out of there so I didn't lose it. Um, I think what I'll do is probably just put it in and then give a, give a tiny tap on this side where it's a little bit loose and it will, uh, kind of stake it in there like a gas key on an AR-15 or, or a, you know so I'll just take a tiny punch and stake it just a tiny bit so it can't get out of there but that's the only issue I've had at all and it was just a little loose I noticed so I didn't want to lose it out here or lose it at a match so I just popped it off there for the time being until I uh, either get them to send me another uh, front sight or stake mine in there a little bit depending on what they think is a good idea um yeah can't wait to, to to get rolling with this thing get working with it so uh it's just a just a beautiful unit beautiful elite ltt trigicon sro mechgar 18 rounders with plus two base pads rock and roll